So the media came out with a flurry of articles last week about speed limiters uh, becoming mandatory in the EU and the UK from uh, 2022 in uh, new vehicles, that's to say. Uh, this video is going to be a little um, opinion or um, commentary piece, uh, no car job walkthrough today. Um, and I dare say there's some risk I could brush up against the political here, so be forewarned. Um, so we're going to look at a uh, EU sourced um, uh, vehicle safety rules thing, this story, and it'll affect the UK too, uh, even if you're a Brexiteer, because the uh, UK regulator is apparently saying that they'll just mirror the EU rules. Uh, more generally, my guess is that it'll be hard to stop this sort of technology spreading um, because it's just too convenient for both manufacturers and governments. Um, so it, it might take longer, but I'd expect Japanese and American cars to end up with um, similar tech eventually. So the speed limiter is just that, a uh, mechanism built into the car's controls that will consider GPS, speedo, uh, and also camera recognition of um, speed limit signs, uh, even to um, encourage the driver to keep within the speed limit. Um, but they report here that the drivers will be able to override the system at will in times of need, so to say. Um, and the rest of these articles in the mainstream media t uh, tends to just be a parroting of the uh, PR that's come out of the regulator. Uh, talking about saving lives, etc., which is fine and noble, of course. Uh, but when you delve into the numbers that tend to get trundled out um, when it comes to speeding, you find uh, little irregularities that tend to make one suspicious. Uh, for instance, the BBC even includes a chart of UK road deaths, uh, which for 40 years now has been absolutely tanking. And of course, we all know that um, you know now cars are, are generally more powerful and faster and easier to drive at speed than they were three or four decades ago. Um, so yeah, this chart's bottomed out too for the last 10 years, which um, seems to indicate that it's sort of hit a floor. Uh, maybe, you know, like unavoidable accidents that fall out of just statistical bad luck and idiots being idiots. Maybe it can't be reduced much more than it already has been. But that doesn't stop them arguing that speed is still a factor in a quarter of all road fatalities. Uh, this again in the UK, uh, Break is a um, road safety charity. And the problem with this argument is that it's circular, because it depends on what you're defining as speed. So you and I might consider speed, in effect, uh, speed a factor in an accident when some moron drives down a country lane at 100 miles per hour and then can't take a corner and um, parks themselves in a tree. Uh, but these numbers will say that speed's a factor, you know, whenever the speed limit is exceeded. So that's why it's a, a circular reasoning thing. So, you know, even a minor accident that, that took place at 5% over the um, over the speed limit because the driver was distracted by a, a pretty girl, you know, that might get recorded in the statistics as um, having speed as a contributory factor. Uh, but as I said, that's just completely circular. So the um, political agendas which build off these stats are always going to be a bit dodgy because um, they're based on these uh, sort of fallacious arguments. But they're effective, politically speaking, because the average voter can't and doesn't really argue against anti-speeding measures. Um, but it is a good excuse to shove this kind of controlling technology in everyone's vehicles. And then it gets worse because it's not really the speed limiter itself that um, is what led me to make this video. Um, a speed limiter that's set up as a driver aid that can be overridden by the driver, it's not really a big deal as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's just a more sophisticated version of those cars which you know beep at you, for example, when you go over the set limit in the dash um, and the console controls. You know, so that that would be fine. The big deal in all of this that the media articles are not leading with, and some are not even covering, is uh, this bit here. Um, quote, other measures agreed by the EU include making data recorders mandatory to help investigate vehicle crashes and assist research into increased safety. Unquote. So data recorders, in other words, a kind of black box, like you might find on, a, on an airliner. Uh, which the police and prosecutors, by the way, will have legal access to 
um, regardless of your will. So your own property, that's to say your car, assuming you own it, will literally be able to testify against you. Um, and a lot of people might not even be aware of what kind of data you know it'll be storing and then ratting on you, so to say, um, after the fact. Now, we already have this problem to some extent now uh, with car computers saving data uh, in the event of a crash or airbag deployment. Um, but it's still basic at this stage. It doesn't include GPS data and you know ex external context. And the other example would be um, dash cams. Uh, a lot of us are using them now for uh, what we imagine is protecting ourselves uh, in the event of an accident or maybe some you know deliberate cr criminal activity um, taken against us on the road. Uh, but what a lot of people don't think about is the fact that dash cam footage just becomes evidence. Um, in any prosecution and it can be used against you just as uh, well as it can be used in your favor. You know, like Americans might be thinking Fifth Amendment, uh, but you're screwed too because um, dash cam footage isn't the same as testifying against yourself. It's not considered self-incrimination. Uh, the footage on the dash cam is just considered evidence like any other uh, and it can be subpoenaed or um, the, the camera or the card or whatever can be confiscated outright, depending on the uh, particular legal regime. So if you use a dash cam, you should be aware of that. Um, but nevertheless, it's a choice, of course. I mean, you, no, nobody's forcing you to um, to use a dash cam. The government's not forcing me to use that one. Um, uh, you know, and I could remove it whenever I want. But with a mandatory black box installed inside the car, alongside this new speed limiting hardware, there's not going to be a choice, is there? Um, and the cynical part of me is looking at this drama about the speed limiting thing and I'm thinking well, this is something of a shell game because uh, on the part of the regulators because they know that the speed thing is what will get the media's attention so everybody will get excited about that but there's not really the truly scary thing that's going on here um, and that is the fact that drivers you know, might now be forced to essentially constantly be on a full-time basis be accumulating evidence which uh, could potentially be used against them um, you know accumulating that evidence with their own property so I think that violates the uh, the, the spirit of self-incrimination laws like the American Fifth, um, Fifth Amendment which marks it out as a rather um, authoritarian measure I think and um, I would say that we should watch that particular aspect of these new developments with some concern um, and uh, not allow ourselves to get distracted by the uh, the speed limiter thing, um, which is more of a red herring, I think. Right, well, that was a um, different style of video, at least for my channel. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and uh, take care.